unfortunately, last night my computer broke down, so uh, uh, luckily I had some backup of my slides, otherwise I guess I would have had to use a whiteboard here. So. But hopefully, uh, hopefully there, will be any, there won't be any glitches. So, okay, so, uh, and this is joint work with Manuel Barbosa, so, uh, who is also here in the audience, so if you'd like to come afterwards and talk to any of us about the results or just say hi, uh, he's also right. Okay, so let me start with uh, a topic that should be familiar to everyone here in the audience. If you don't know about uh, hash functions, you probably should not be here at crypto. So what are hash functions? Uh, hash functions are uh, functions that take a long and arbitrary text, like this book from the medieval ages, and then applies a hash function, applies a function to it, and outputs a short and random looking string. Um, so as you know, there are many protocols out there that use uh, hash functions. However, uh, provable security for these protocols are not always possible. And one reason for, for this is that when designers have implemented uh, these uh, protocols, they have actually assumed that these hash functions behave like uh, random functions. So what they have assumed is that this hash function here actually behaves like a random function, which is more commonly known as a, a random oracle. And a random oracle is basically a function that outputs independent and uniform outputs on uh, inputs that it gets. And this methodology to design uh, protocols have been very successful. Uh, so we can use the random or oracle methodology to, to uh, um, uh, study the security of public key encryption schemes, signature, uh, signature schemes. Uh, as far as I know, parts of the TLS protocol still use uh, uh, the random oracle, uh, symmetric schemes, uh, etc. So what these random oracles actually model is an ideal hash function. Hash functions just output independent random uh, outputs. So what does this talk about? So in this talk, we are, giving a, uh, we are given a random oracle, and our task is to build an encryption scheme. So you might uh, say that, well, surely this is a, a problem that has been studied in cryptography in the last 40 years. You know, how can, how can we build an encryption scheme from a hash function? Well, but uh, the difference in this talk is that, as I, as I mentioned, a random oracle is in an ideal hash function, and what we want to do is that we want to s inherit all the strengths that are built into this hash function, into our encryption scheme. That is, we want to build an ideal encryption scheme. Now, I told you that uh, uh, an ideal uh, hash function is a random function, and that this raises the question, what is the appropriate reference object for an ideal encryption scheme? Okay, so with that, let me tell you what uh, an authenticated encryption scheme is, and here's a syntax for authenticated encryption. Uh, it basically consists of three algorithms, uh, key generation, which outputs a key K, an encryption algorithm, which takes a key K, and nonce N, associate data A, a message M, uh, an expansion um, parameter tau, and outputs a ciphertext, which is tau bits uh, longer than the message. And decryption takes key, nonce, associate data ciphertext tau, and outputs message or and the intuitive security properties that we need are uh, confidentiality and authenticity in the sense that nothing about the messages are leaked under a randomly chosen and unknown key, and also on authenticity in the sense that an adversary cannot forge new ciphertext without knowing the key. So let me simplify this even further and uh, look at uh, just a very simple version of AE where I have just got rid of the nonce and associate data. So we have key generation, uh, encryption and decryption. And if you think about it for a second, you'll see that this is basically a keyed injection. Uh, why injection? Because we want different messages to go to different ciphertexts so we can actually uniquely decrypt these ciphertexts. So it injectively maps messages to ciphertexts. Okay, so what is ideal encryption? So hash functions are just 
uh, functions. And as I told, an ideal hash function is a random function. What are ciphers or block ciphers? These are keyed permutations. So what is an ideal cipher? It's a random keyed permutation. Uh, encryption, well, we just discussed that it's a keyed injection. So what's, a, uh, what's an ideal encryption? It's a very easy exercise that you can just fill in randomly. It's a random keyed injection. OK, and this actually gives rise to a new model of computation which is somewhere in between the random oracle model corresponding to random functions and uh, the ideal cipher model corresponding to the random key permutation. So it's somewhere in between. Because injections have more structure than functions, but less structure than permutations. OK, so let's go back to this picture. So what is the object? that the random key injection. And then the question becomes, how can we go from random functions to random injections? And there's a beautiful framework out there formalizing what it means to go from different systems uh, uh, called indifferentiability. Uh, so let me just briefly uh, talk about what the indifferentiability definition says. So indifferentiability basically says that, basically tries to define uh, what it means for a construction C with access to random oracle to be as good as another uh, random system here, an ideal encryption scheme. So one attempt in doing this would be to basically say that the construction with access to the random oracle is indistinguishable from ideal encryption. But you might say that, well, this is not everything that the adversary has access to. The adversary also has access to the underlying random oracle in trying to distinguish these two systems. So we can say that, well, how about we look at this setting? But uh, a minute of thought reveals that this is actually never going to be the case because these are dependent random variables, whereas here you have independent random variables. This is a this is an independently chosen random injection from this random function here. So actually, the, the approach is wrong. So what we need to do is actually we need to try to define this uh, in terms of simulation-based security from the UC framework, etc. And it takes 10 minutes, 15 minutes to develop the definition, but it turns out the right definition is that you say that basically this system here, the construction with random oracle is indistinguishable from ideal encryption. And a simulator which cooks up random oracle values as if they are coming from this ideal encryption scheme. Right. So in terms of pictures, I'm not a big fan of this picture. It appears everywhere, so I thought I'll put it up as well, so the distinguisher gets access to construction random oracle, which goes around the random oracle, and here the simulator is calling. I think it's kind of confusing that the arrows go in the opposite directions. But the important thing about this definition is that it actually provides a unified attack surface to the adversary, in the sense that the adversary can actually control all the inputs to the uh, encryption scheme. So it's not the case that there is a random key chosen and it's, un, it's not under the control of the adversary. Everything is under the adversarial control. The key, the nouns, the message, associate data, et cetera. And I want to emphasize that, oops, that uh, keys can be, for example, chosen in a correlated way or messages could depend on the keys, uh, completely arbitrary correlations, as you would. And that is the power of indifferentiability. So you might say, well, why consider indifferentiability? Uh, so there is a fundamental theorem of Mauro Renel Hollenstein uh, from TCC 2004, which won the Test of Time Award uh, a few years ago, showing that if a construction is indifferentiable from uh, an ideal encryption scheme, then this construction is secure in many adversarial environments. So uh, these adversarial environments include the standard AE notion of security or misuse resilient AE security or robust AE security. These are uh, uh, recent notions of security for authenticated encryption. But it goes well beyond these. Uh, it includes, for example, KDM security, where you can choose messages dependent on the keys. Leakage resilience, where you can maybe obtain some leakage about the key. RKA security, where keys could be correlated with each other. Committing encryption, this is a notion which we show in the previous talk, where the encryption should be basically collision resistant, deduplication schemes, etc. 
However, more is true in the sense that you can actually consider combined models where you, for example, have a supermodel where you combine RKA security and KDM security and you ask, is it the case that my ideal encryption scheme is secure in this model? And actually unforeseen security models, security models that we have not yet thought about, as long as they fall under this umbrella of uh, gains, which are called single stage. These are gains where there is a central adversary which basically orchestrates the attack on the ideal encryption scheme. So we, in the paper, we give a slight extension of this composition result which contains the KDM and RKA for practical use, use cases. Okay, so uh, you might ask, uh, are there any uh, authenticated encryption schemes out there. So we went on and we looked at some of the schemes out there in the literature. So we started with a paper of Nam Prempre, Rogovay and Shripton from 2014, uh, which basically uh, look at different ways to combine an encryption and a PRF to build an authenticated encryption scheme. For example, here this one is uh, encrypt in Mac because you encrypt the message and then you kind of pass it to the PRF. So here's Mac and encrypt, you Mac and then you encrypt that, roughly speaking. And here's the synthetic IV mode where you synthetically generate this IV from nonce message and associated data. So what we actually show in the paper is that none of these are indifferentiable, uh, except A8, that all of these fall under indifferentiability attack. And uh, let me just give you an idea of what this is. It's a very simple observation about this one. So in this construction, by the way, there's a typo here, I should say, I could not change it because my laptop is not working anymore. So, uh, um, so the, if you look at the construction, you see that this key L here only affects the tag T here. It does not affect the cipher tick, so it's written the other way around here. Uh, however, if you, if you consider an ideal encryption scheme, which is a totally random injection, then all inputs are going to affect all outputs. So, and then you can use that feature to actually dis differentiate these two. And if you try to practically interpret that, this actually can be interpreted as a related key attack on this key. So uh, in the paper, we actually give a general template for composition of various schemes. And uh, we show that if a scheme falls under this template, uh, then uh, you can attack it via two different uh, differentiators. Uh, uh, details are in the paper. So. It's just to simplify the analysis for all these schemes. What about the specific schemes? So we also looked at OCB, Deoxys, which is a Caesar candidate, AEZ, uh, which was a Caesar candidate. And these uh, schemes also fall uh, to differentiability attacks. And some of these are not surprising because these schemes are not uh, supposed to be misuse resilient. So they are not going to be indifferentiable either. But some of them are supposed to be misuse resilient. And uh, we attack them uh, with more specific attacks. So uh, the conclusion of uh, that part of the talk is that here is indifferentius brutally stabbing the Caesar candidates. <laughs> so are there indifferentiable schemes out there? You might just still ask. Uh, well, uh, we went back to what else? The Feistel construction from the 70s. Uh, so here is the Feistel construction, which takes a left and right part of the message and processes it to random, hash uh, random oracles, as it is written here. Um, so what do we know about these, uh, this construction? Uh, well, it was shown uh, that uh, at some point that five rounds of Feistel are necessary to get a, key, a random keyed uh, injection, uh, or, or uh, five rounds are not sufficient to get a random keyed uh, injection. You can, you can attack five rounds, and six rounds onwards is actually secure. But then a bug was found in this proof, and the number of rounds went all the way up to 14. Uh, uh, and then it was reduced to 10 and then to 8 by uh, many clever people, some of whom are on the audience, and one of which here is, on, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is uh, chairing the session. Um, so what we show for uh, injections is that if you just replace the left part with zeros, you just, pass, you just put some zeros there and you just put the message on the uh, right part of the wire, then three rounds of Feistel are necessary and sufficient to build random keyed injections. So in terms of the picture for injection, it looks something like this. 
And we also mentioned that these proofs uh, for permutations go for 80, 100 pages, whereas the proof for injection, you know, only goes for 13 game hops. So if you're interested in uh, learning about indifferentiability, maybe you can look at the paper and try to see. So the bounds that we achieve, the actual concrete bounds for security that we achieve are also much better than the bounds for permutation. So it's like a birthday bound. So. OK, uh, so that actually uh, gives us an offline authenticated encryption. And we, in the paper, we also study online authenticated encryption. So what's an online encryption or maybe streaming encryption? It's where, uh, it's where uh, we need to uh, process these messages as they arrive. So uh, we don't want to wait for the movie to end and then start watching it. We want to uh, watch the movie as the packets arrive. So you can actually take this intuition and then try to formalize it. And then uh, you can take the syntax of a normal online authenticated encryption and then consider a random online authenticated encryption which then uh, gives rise to the reference object for ideal online authenticated encryption. And what we show in the paper that uh, chaining up an AEAD will indifferentiably turn it on. In the sense that you can, for example, start with your key and nonce, hash it to get some state value, then feed that state value to your hash function with the incoming associate data, you know, pass it to the encryption as the key, Encrypt the message with this key, get your ciphertext. Then again, prepare a summary of everything so far by hashing everything and putting it into state and then chaining onwards again. Uh, so we can show that this construction actually gives an ideal online authenticated encryption. Uh, so uh, let me end by saying a couple of words about efficiency. Uh, so the final result are, of our paper is actually a negative result, uh, which shows that any indifferentiable construction of a W n bit random injection from an n bit permutation must place two W minus two queries to the random permutation. So it basically gives a lower bound on the uh, number of queries that the construction should make to the uh, underlying random permutation. And to prove this, we basically combine techniques used for uh, lower bounds for collision resistance that Paul mentioned uh, in, in his slide with lower bounds uh, for pseudorandom generators uh, from Gen work of Gennaro and Trevison. So as far as I know, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, this is the first indifferentiability lower bound that I know out there. But uh, our Feistel construction actually has, uh, makes three W queries because it has three random oracles. And then this leaves a gap that uh, do we actually have, uh, uh, does the lower bound extend all the way up to three, you know, just under three? Or is it the case that we can have a more efficient construction coming down all the way to two queries? So it would be nice to resolve questions like this. I like that. OK. so that concludes the talk. So uh, basically, the talk was about a new uh, way of viewing authenticated encryption as a random keyed injection. And uh, this was motivated by the indifferentiability composition theorem, which gives security in uh, all single stage environments. Thank you.